we have this tendency to think that perfection is always something other than what we are right now. We have this definition of our minds of this is what perfect looks like and it's not me. And we tell it to ourselves over and over again, even if we come to terms with, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, but, you know, we say these things all the time because we don't think that we can be perfect. We have this kind of unattainable goal of this is perfection and I don't fit into that. We look at ourselves as different, as something other than perfect. And I want to ask, what if we flipped this around and changed our definition of perfection? What if perfect includes being messy, being inconsistent, being up and down? What if perfection also meant chaotic? What if perfection also meant messing up and failing and learning and growing and changing? What if all of that was included in your definition of perfect so that perfect could be something that you are instead of something that you will never live up to? You see, we tend to create these boxes. We like to put everybody into categories. We, we organize everybody in our heads by um, this is who they are, this is their belief system, this is their religious affiliation, this is their political party. Whatever these boxes are that we create, that we put people in, that we put ourselves in. If we have this idea of perfect as something other than what we are, it creates a scenario where we have to align with these different boxes, with these different labels. And even if we don't exactly fit into something, we put this label on ourselves and then we start to change who we are to fit more and more into that label. We want to conform, we want to fit in, we want to be a part of a group, we want to belong, we want that community. And so this idea of perfect being something different, something that is other, something that is not us, creates this scenario where we are always um, adapting to who somebody else wants us to be, adapting to what we think perfect is, adapting to who we would be if we exactly aligned with this label or this viewpoint or this belief system. We really want to belong. And so we try to become perfect. We work and work and work to uh, change ourselves, to hide ourselves, to become this definition of perfect that we can never really attain. And so what if perfect is something that you are outside of any label or any box or any belief or any system that you could put yourself in? What if perfect is who you are right now? Because each of us is so unique and different. And even when we find other people who we align with on so many levels, we still have our own ways of thinking. We have our own ways of seeing the world. We are unique. We have different perspectives. We have different ideas. We have different thoughts. We have different questions. And so really, Shaking up this idea of perfection requires you to start listening to yourself. So how do you do that? How do you trust yourself? How do you become who you are instead of what you think you have to be or who somebody else wants you to be or somebody's definition of perfect? How do you learn to trust that, that who you are is perfect and that your way of thinking and your way of showing up in this life is perfect? I know a lot of us at very young ages learned that we couldn't trust ourselves. We learned that there was always somebody else that was an authority figure. We learned that there was always somebody who knew better or was smarter or had everything figured out. 
And we were constantly told that what you are experiencing, what you as an individual are feeling, how you are expressing yourself, the behaviors that you have are not okay, are not good, can't be trusted. And so we carry that with us throughout our whole lives and become adults who don't know how to trust ourselves because we weren't really given the opportunity to learn who we are and what we want that's separate from what other people want for us and what they want us to do and who they want us to be. And so this really is a journey of self-discovery, learning to trust yourself. Think of it like this relationship. You know, if you have a relationship with a partner or with a friend, how do you build trust in that relationship? What are the kind of things that you do to create a, a bond, a foundation in that relationship where you can have that mutual trust? And then do that with yourself. So what can you do with yourself to show that you are trustworthy, that you can be listened to, that your, your gut instinct or your intuition or those things that you think or that you want or that you desire are valid and that you can have those things. Maybe you need to start following through more on the things that you tell yourself that you're going to do or that you want to do. Maybe you need to practice having better boundaries where you are asking for what you need or you are saying yes or no to the things that um, other people are bringing to you based on whether it's really what you want and what you value or not. Maybe you need to take some time just to talk to yourself. You can look in the mirror and talk to yourself or write in a journal. Take the time to get to know who you are and what you want. Experiment. Try different things and find out, oh, I really liked that or oh, I really didn't like that. I want to do this again. I don't want to do this again. Treat it like this curious new relationship where you are learning about who you are and what you like. You're learning what lights you up and what shuts you down. Take the time to get to know yourself so that you can begin to see you as somebody who is perfect just as you are instead of perfect being something that you can never attain to.